can you tell me a little bit about your research into the paranormal? Well, I started my working life uh, many years ago as a magician. And so lots of my research looks at how people kid themselves that they are looking at something paranormal when actually it has a normal explanation. Because that's what magicians do all the time. They, they convince you they're performing miracles uh, when actually there's a, a very ugly normal explanation for, for what it is they're up to. So I guess I use that background to, to springboard into looking into to paranormal claims. So what are we talking here when we say uh, belief in the paranormal? Um, psychics talking to the dead, what are some specific examples that, are, that you've dealt with? Yeah, so I've, I've, I've looked at mediums who claim to, to talk to the dead, um, psychics who will tell you something about yourself that uh, uh, they allegedly picked up through their amazing abilities and, and sometimes predict the, the future. And that can take many forms. It might be a tarot reader, it might be a palmist, it might be somebody looking at uh, the tea leaves or a crystal ball. Um, very rarely you will get uh, people who claim psychokinesis, mind over matter. So they all focus on a spoon, for example, and it will start to bend, something like that. Um, all those things would, would come under the remit of extraordinary abilities. I've seen some pretty convincing examples of psychic ability. So uh, a psychic might uh, claim that uh, something will happen in the future, and it se seems very detailed and, and specific. And then the, the person who is being read, uh, it turns out to be true for them. Um, what's your response to that? I think when you go to a psychic or a medium, there, there are several psychological mechanisms at play. So one is what's called Barnum statements, these very general statements that are true of everyone, but we think they're just true of us. Uh, so the notion that um, you look at someone's palm and say, oh, you've got a lot of untapped creative potential. You know, we all like to go, oh, yes, my goodness, how terribly insightful. Um, so they're, they're just true of everyone. Some of them are double headers. Um, so you're the sort of person that enjoys going to parties, but also you enjoy being uh, alone with a book. And of course that covers both extroverts and, and introverts. Other times there's a lot of predictions being thrown out. And then what happens is that if the prediction comes true, the person remembers the reading and forgets all of the, uh, the other uh, predictions which didn't come true, which is a kind of spread betting, uh, if you like. Sometimes there's self-fulfilling prophecy. You say to somebody, oh my goodness, you're, you're applying for some sort of new job. And uh, they go, yes, oh, it's going to go really well. Well, now they're extra confident when they go into the interview. And, and so uh, the, the prediction uh, creates the future. So, you know, most of the time when someone's talking to us and they, they talk about what they're going to do that evening or whatever, it's pretty vague. And, and we sharpen up those uh, comments to make sense of them. And, and that's what's happening when you go to a psychic. The, the, the difference is they can't actually predict the future. So the fact that we are so good at communicating with one another, that we can infer what somebody means even though the words aren't there, means that we're, we're, we're wonderful interpersonally, and it's also the price you pay then to go along to a psychic and trip yourself up thinking they can actually predict the future. So all of these different mechanisms are at play. To me, what's interesting is it doesn't look like that. It looks like you go in, this person tells you all about yourself, predicts something about the future, comes true, isn't that incredible? Actually, it's quite complicated. There isn't one psychology there, there are several psychological mechanisms. It seems a common explanation for these kind of beliefs, uh, especially if you're, if you're a non-believer in the paranormal, is, oh, people are just stupid, they'll believe anything. But you mentioned that there are a lot of psychological mechanisms behind there. Uh, do you think it's true that, um, that psychological mechanisms are a more powerful way to explain this stuff than, say, motivations and personality? I, I think the notion that people who believe in this stuff are stupid simply isn't true. There's been some research looking at um, IQ, which is, if you like, a, a measure of intelligence and uh, I believe in the paranormal. There's not much of a relationship there. There might be a small one, but it's not uh, particularly um, striking. I think what's happening is that a lot of people want to believe in this stuff. Why else would you go to a, a psychic? You are probably looking for some sort of guidance. And so I always uh, say it's a little bit like going to a doctor if you didn't feel very well. And the doctor says, well, what are the symptoms? You say, well, you're the expert, you tell me. It would be a ridiculous thing to say. The two of you are there to work on the problem together. And I think that's the attitude of most people going to a psychic. I have a problem, we are here to work on it together. And so all of those biases flow in as you try and make sense of the, the situation. And there is some research suggesting that if people are having a tough time in their lives, if they're facing uncertainty, 
or as a child they uh, faced a lot of uncertainty and upset, then that tends to bias them towards believing in the paranormal, thinking there is a magical solution to their problems. Um, so the people that are going along uh, to a psychic or a medium can be quite psychologically vulnerable. And of course, one of the uh, issues here is whether going along to the psychic or medium helps and whether they'd be better off in a more sort of mainstream counselling uh, scenario. Can you tell me about the nature of superstitious belief? Uh, why do you suppose it is that we all believe some pretty strange things? Well, superstition is fascinating, in, in part because it's so widespread. So although only a third half of people believe in a psychic or a medium, almost 90, 95% of people would touch wood, cross their fingers, whatever it is. So in that sense, we're all irrational. Let us not believe that we're, we're rational creatures. Why do we go for it? Well, I suspect because we're told from a very young age that there might be something to it. Uh, otherwise, you might get bad luck, and that's a real problem. And it only takes a few seconds just to touch wood or, or whatever. If it was a very elaborate ritual, I suspect it wouldn't catch on quite so quickly. If the idea was you have to do three forward rolls and a star jump every single time you say something, like, I hope that goes well, then people wouldn't be quite as superstitious. So part of it is it, it costs very little. And if it is true, the benefits are enormous. The other thing is that we often are one trial learners. So if we do something, like we wear our lucky shirt and we go along to a job interview and it's, oh my goodness, it goes wonderfully, then we think, wow, that, that this somehow, this shirt is somehow linked to me doing well and I'll wear it again next time. Uh, in exactly the same way that, um, you know, sports people will lace up their shoes in a certain way because when they did that once, suddenly it was a, a great uh, performance. So uh, we are naturally uh, good at linking things like that, which leads us to be uh, superstitious, particularly under conditions of uncertainty. And of course, the most superstitious groups are sports people who have to perform in a certain window of time, actors, are exactly the same. So it's uncertainty that drives that belief. I would say to both skeptics and believers, try and base your uh, thoughts and your beliefs on the evidence. I mean, that's what you do in many different areas of your life. You wouldn't go along to buy a used or a second-hand car and you go, well, I know I'll trust my intuition. If you didn't understand about cars, you'd take somebody with you that did because this is an area where you need evidence. And I would say, uh, if you're going along to a psychic or a medium, understand the tricks of the trade. Be an informed client. And if you see them being used, get out of there. My name is Richard. I think about the paranormal. Mm -hmm.